a cooking product. Here we will review an example of the poor design of the wine turbine generator. Number of stages slots is 48 and number of rotor poles is 12. The ratio of stator slots to the rotor poles is an integer, which leads to an extremely high value of the cogging torque value. Pigment magnets on the rotor produce the magnetic field that interacts with the slotted structure of the stator. Rotor tends to align its poles with the tips of the stator, and that is called the cogging torque. I am going to switch off the current in the stator winding, so the only source of the magnetic field is the pendant magnets on the rotor. And I am going to simulate a set of DC magnetic problems with different rotor positions and measure the torque acting on the rotor. OK, let's start quick field now. In big field, I create a new problem. Generator. Next. Problem type is magnetostatics. Model class is plane parallel. Length units are millimeters. The generator axial length is 400 millimeters. Finish. On the left you can see the problem pane, and on the right is the geometry model editor window. You can draw the geometry model here, or you can input the geometry model from the AutoCAD XF file. I already have the drawing prepared in the cut. Here is the file, so I'm going to input the model. Here you can see the model imported. You can recognize a rotor, a stator, band magnets, and let me zoom in. I will need the middle line in the air gap, so I'm going to add a circle here. Insert shape, circle with a diameter of 282 millimeters. Insert. Okay. Now let's assign labels. To labels you can explain the geometric object's meaning and provide material properties. Switch to Select Object mode, click the object to select and type in the label name. This is Rotor. Click here, this is Stator. This is Shaft. I'm not going to specify currents in the slots, so for the slots I can use the same label. Well, I better select everything and assign label slots. Then for this part I assign label rotor and for this body I assign label stator. This is shaft. Now let's zoom in. This is air. And this is air. Now let's assign labels to permanent magnets. This permanent magnet is magnetized outward. Its position is plus 90 degrees, so I'll give it label North Pole plus 90. This would be again North Pole, but the direction is plus 30. This would be the North Pole, and direction is plus 120. This would be the North Pole, and direction minus 120. This would be the North Pole, and the direction is minus 90. And this would be the North Pole with a direction of minus 30. Now let's assign labels to the South Poles. This South Pole is magnetized inward, and it's 
geometrical position is zero degrees. So, so plus zero. This is south plus sixty. This is south plus one hundred twenty. This is south plus one hundred eighty. This is south minus one hundred twenty. And this is south minus sixty. Okay, that's all for block labels, but I'm going to assign labels to the external boundary. Again, hold the control button, press to select several objects at the same time. External, and I'm going to assign label to the A gap. Select this half arc and this half arc, A gap. Okay, now let's provide physical properties for these labels. Double click the label name in the tree. Negative magnetic permeability of the air is 1. Okay. The rotor is made of steel and the permeability is a nonlinear function. I should specify the BH curve data here. I have the file. And here is the BH curve data, so I simply copy this and paste it here. OK. And the stator is made of the same steel. I use the same BH curve here. OK. For the slots, I specify magnetic permeability of 1. And for the shaft, I specified the magnetic permeability of 1. OK. For the permanent magnet, I should specify the permeability, which is 1.05. The same for all permanent magnets. And the quartz force magnitude is 950 kiloamperes per meter. This permanent magnet is magnetized outward, and its position is plus 90 degrees. So the magnetization direction is plus 90. OK. This permanent magnet is made of the same material. I use the same magnitude of the quartz force, but the direction varies. Now it's magnetized outward, but the direction is plus 30 degrees. OK. This payment magnet is made of the same material, but the magnetization direction is 120 degrees. This payment magnet magnetization direction is minus 120 degrees. And this payment magnet magnetization direction is minus 30 degrees. And for this payment magnet, the magnetization direction is minus 90 degrees. OK. Now let's provide physical properties for the south poles. The same magnetic permeability, the magnetization direction is 0 degrees, but now the payment magnet, this is the south pole, is magnetized inward. So I will specify negative magnitude of the cursor force. OK. For this magnet, permeability 1.05, negative magnitude of the quartz force because it's magnetized inward, and the direction is plus 60. For this magnet, direction is minus 120. For this magnet, the direction is minus 60. For this magnet, the direction is plus 120. And for this magnet, the direction is plus 180. Okay, 
That is all for block labels. Now let's provide physical properties for the edge labels. The magnetic field is contained within the electrical machine. There is no magnetic flux going outside. So for the external boundary, I specify zero magnetic potential boundary condition. And for the air gap, actually there is no physical properties I should assign here. So I simply click OK. And you see the zero mark next to the label name. This means it's an empty label that doesn't hold any physical data and is simply ignored during the analysis. OK, geometry model and the data are ready. Before I start the analysis, I should build the finite element mesh. Just press this button and the mesh will be generated. Now save all problem files and solve the problem. The problem is solved. Let's take a look at the results. Here you can see the magnetic field lines. Let's calculate the torque. I should use the contour tool. I can select rotor and select permanent magnets. But there is a faster way. Contour clear. Let's zoom in. I will select the middle line in the air gap. Click to select. Click to select. Now the middle line is selected and I should change the counter direction to the counter clockwise. Now you see the rotor assembly is selected. Follow to the integrals and here is the mechanical torque. This torque is calculated for the rotor that has the axle length of 400 mm and for this specific position of the rotor. Remember the torque depends on the rotor position. Let's rotate the rotor and calculate the new value of the torque. Open the geometry model. Well, it will be easier to rotate not the rotor but the stator. Click to select the stator, right click, move selection, rotation by half degrees. You see this node shifted. The stator was rotated. Now I should I should again build the finite element mesh. Save all problem files and solve the problem again. Okay, let's take a look at the results. Again, I should use the control tool to select the rotor assembly and to calculate the torque. It was 1.1, now it is 87. And I should keep going, I should rotate the stator, simulate the problems, to get the torque versus angle dependency. There is a way to automate this task. I can use the built-in label mover tool. In label mover, I specify the base problem, which is generator PBM. Then I should specify the values to measure. Add values. I need a compound contour, which consists of the air gap, and I need to change the direction. OK. And for this contour, I would like to calculate the mechanical torque at the value. Now, what I'm going to change in the model is to rotate the stator. So the coging torque period is 7.5 degrees. So I'm going to rotate the stator. Stator rotate by 0 0.075. Add step. You see the model was opened and the stator will be rotated a bit close. 
and I'm going to repeat this step 100 times. Okay, now everything is ready to get the results. Label model generates a set of problems with different order positions. These problems will be simulated, then the torque will be calculated, and the results will be stored here in the table. Now you see 100 problems were generated. It took about 7 minutes. Now these problems will be solved. With a multi-core processor, Labelmore can simulate several problems simultaneously. In my case, the processor has 8 cores, so 8 problems are opened and simulated simultaneously. Which is much faster than simulating problems one by one. Okay, it took about 40 minutes to generate and simulate 100 problems. And here you can see the results in the table. And you can also see the results on the plot. The maximum torque value is about 300 newtons per meter. You may wonder, is there a way to reduce the coming torque? Yes, there are some ways. You can make the skewed stator slots. You can attenuate the pole shape, or you can choose a different number of poles on the rotor, for example, 14 instead of 12. All these cases can be simulated in quick field. If you search for the coding torque on our website, you will find the example page. Here you can read about problem setup, browse the solution section, take a look at the result pictures and download the simulation files. Simulation files may be opened and the results may be viewed using any Quickfield edition, including Quickfield Student Edition, that you can download from our website for free.